Welcome back to the Michael Brooks Show. Joining us now, the host, the main host of the Majority Report <laughs> with Sam. <laughs> Are you doing an impersonation of me now? What? I, oh, I'm sorry. I, if For you were doing that on I, purpose. For some reason when I sat here, I just all of a sudden want to go on Twitter. You <laughs> <laughs> really as soon assuming as I, Michael. <laughs> yeah, right, I just immediately worked on my Twitter and on tomorrow's show. That's uh, all I... Mm. I <laughs> doing? I was introducing you. Oh, all right. <laughs> Great. Oh, welcome, Sam. <laughs> what, what do I... <laughs> Am I supposed to turn this? No, I don't think you're supposed to okay. turn this. No, it's fine. Just leave it there. Sure. Just leave it there. The show continues to grow significantly, and I appreciate everybody that made it, has made it possible, including, of course, Sam. Oh, uh, if we can have a genuine sorry, I was tweeting, I was tweeting out. And I know I, like... I couldn't do it. I want one genuine moment with you. Oh, we can do that. In the <laughs> Post it. Po oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> fucking stink all right. You know what? Sam is actually basically pretty incidental to all of this. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> mm -hmm. no, but seriously, thank you, Sam. I appreciate it. My pleasure. I'm very everything. happy. The show is doing so well a year in. Um, I think it's I, I can't imagine you could have anticipated this level of success projecting out 12 months I did <laughs> <laughs> about to enter a no fucking sellout zone and uh, joining me uh, via Skype he's a journalist he's a guy who's done more to expose the, the corruption at the DNC <laughs> And practically anybody, he's an independent, re he's a guy who's also recently, we're going to talk about it in a minute, he's going to get sneezed a lot by so-called progressives. I call them faux fucking aggressives. They're not, they promote war. A.A. Seaman is with us from Skype. A.A., hey, thank, thank you for being here. Uh, <laughs> as you know, I'm a journalist and an editor and an author. And a radio personality, producer, and an auteur, showrunner, a certified public accountant, day laborer, and a homemaker. I also do some search engine optimization, and as well as a solution coordinator, and a content strategist, a user so experience magistrate. <laughs> Joining me uh, by remote, who is at the New Garden, uh, is, is Scott So, What's going on uh, over at, uh, at, at uh, the Garden? It's a little disappointing, to be honest. I thought that more people would be here. I thought that <laughs> believe in the hoax, but we're here. We're going to uh, watch some highlight reels later. Yeah, that's great. Uh, but you do realize it would have been uh, not uh, hockey season there. That's why <laughs> you don't play hockey. I'm a little slow. All right. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Uh, Christmas book. So, um, yeah, we wanted to kind of make a book that showed um, what goes on at the vice president's residence during Christmas, but also kind of helped people to just um, be able to relate to the idea of, you know, coming around loved ones during Christmas time and that being more important than gifts and, and mm -hmm. getting expensive things. That's great. So, yeah. And it's about Christmas. It's about Hanukkah. What is so mm -hmm. special about your oh, fun? This was your fun. You got now, your freshman You know, this year. is the thing that's really uh, <laughs> disgusting. Why do they have to ruin it by saying Hanukkah? <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I think Israel has the, a right to protect what itself from of Arabs. people even celebrate that holiday? Even Fox News feels a need to bend over, <laughs> pull off their shorts, and take it from liberalism in this country. It's unbelievable. <laughs> because that's really the only way you're going to get a pure Christmas greeting. And, you know, besides us and President Trump, look, Israel <laughs> has a right to defend itself. Now, <laughs> it doesn't even need to hear about Hanukkah all the time. No, it's unbelievable. I, 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 we're inundated, even in a story about the best Christmas ever. They have to bring up Hanukkah. Why does everything that's good have to be ruined? <laughs> <laughs> uh, political correctness. That's why. 
That's uh, <laughs> 509 area code. Who's this? Uh, where are you calling from? Good afternoon, guys. Hey. This is Anthony from San Juan. <laughs> Anthony from San Juan. Anthony Welcome from San to the Juan. program. What's happening? Yeah, okay. Uh, according to a recent poll from the Gateway Pundit, 75% of liberals are triggered by the use of the term Chinese virus, <laughs> and another 80% are triggered by seeing people go out in public. And um, according to a poll conducted recently by myself, 100% of liberals can suck my dick. <laughs> awesome. Was, uh, I love it. <laughs> to replace Mike Pence, who's a traitor and probably also a closeted homosexual. <laughs> I would pick Mike. I mean, it's interesting to to look back on those, you know, those clips. The that was when I think about Michael's comedy. The, I don't even think about those clips, to be honest with you. Mm. Like where we were playing characters or. Or doing bits. I mean, we would, I, I, I mean, I think many people know that during, <clears throat> it started on, I think it was either April Fool's or uh, a Halloween. I mean, I don't know. Like he, he, he was with the show for eight years. And so it must have been like within a year, I think maybe we started to do the Ken, Ken and Ken show basically <laughs> because we wanted a day off from doing any real work. And <laughs> we kept saying like, it would be so easy to do a right wing show. And I was like, well, you know, April Fools, let's just do it. And that way we basically don't have to do any work. And <laughs> so we would come in and honestly, the, the most amount of thought went into the costumes. That was it. Like we didn't really plan out that much stuff. Like we started to do beats. Maybe we planned it out a little bit more than we would most shows, but um, you know, that moment, like when Reagan called in, I mean, it was not planned. I had no idea what he was going to do. Um, <laughs> and we would not, we would just basically do beats, but that was like, that, that seemed like such a limited, I mean, we did maybe, I guess, maybe 10 of them, 12 of those, yeah. like, uh, Ken, Kenny Ken's over the course <laughs> of, of eight years, maybe a little bit more. Uh, and <laughs> we did, I don't know, over the course of eight years, 2000 shows, maybe, uh, maybe a little bit more. And so um, like when I think of the comedy that Michael did, uh, that, that I think, you know, frankly, like I, I, I couldn't do uh, was more around like the characters that he would play, just like slip into with his impressions. And, and not just the impressions themselves, but the sort of the, the, the satire that was embedded in those impressions. Uh, I mean, I, when I watched that stuff and I'm laughing and it was fun and it was funny, but like the, the moments when we're going back and forth um, and just riffing on stuff, I think is like, is the stuff that really sticks out for me. Although it was fun to watch that stuff too. Can I just jump in about the lyricism? The, the, the part about Israel having a right to exist, <laughs> just going back and saying that over and over again, it, uh, it's so beautiful and it, it's so funny and it's to perfect political satire. It, it's saying so much. It's, it's so just little, a, it was a, yeah. Yeah. The power of repetition. It, it, it was musical watching that. 